Earth could also speed up. We have mechanisms in place for that as well. If we speed up by a full second, then we take out a leap second in one of those two spots in the year. So the last minute would have 59 seconds instead of 61 seconds. All this is happening under the hood. Your computer will know about it, but you don't have to. Because milliseconds on a day, a second every now and then added or subtracted from a calendar really makes no difference to, I, I, I'm betting you don't live your life time to the millisecond. I'm just thinking, just that's just me making assumptions about you. So lots of things affect the rotation of the earth. Foremost among them is the sloshing of oceanic tides on and off the continental shelves. These tides are primarily raised by the moon. And so the earth and the moon do this kind of ballet where the moon raises the tides, the tidal bulge of the earth actually speeds the moon up in its orbit, forcing it to ascend in its distance, actually spiraling away from us. Not by much, a few centimeters a year. And how do we know that? Well, you can calculate what it would be given this dual dance that's going on, or you can stick mirrors on the moon, beam a laser to it, time the return trip, and calculate how far away the moon is which is exactly what we did with Apollo 11 back in 1969. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin laid down what are called corner reflectors. Light coming in from any direction will reflect back exactly parallel to the direction the light came in. And so you come back to Earth, beam a laser out of your telescope, check the flash on its way back, time it, and there you have it. We confirmed that in fact, the moon is spiraling away from Earth as it's been doing for billions of years. The moon used to be much closer and much bigger in the sky. All right, well, that's one thing that slows down arguing with a politician. You know why? Because politicians, representatives, senators, they are duly elected by a community of people, the electorate. So if they want to say the Earth is 6,000 years old, it's probably because their electorate thinks so. And so as an educator, my task is to educate the electorate so that they could then vote people into office who can make sensible legislative decisions that can affect us all and not derive from their personal private belief system. The man. Which is in all the news. You take a look at an image and you see some galaxies and some, some stars. Yeah, I expect that. But wait a minute, it's a movie. All of a sudden you see some of these objects are not stationary. They're booking across the field of view. There's another one going that way. And then this way. These are undiscovered asteroids never before documented by any prior scientist or telescope. How many asteroids did it discover? Might you ask? It discovered more than 2,000 asteroids in the first 10 hours of operation. By the way, we discover a lot of asteroids every year, tens of thousands of asteroids. So I don't want to play down the significance of the world's effort to discover asteroids, but if we discover tens of thousands of asteroids in a year, and the Rubin telescope discovered 2,000 asteroids in 10 hours, that's a month's worth of asteroids in 10 hours. And by the way, this tranche of more than 2,000 asteroids, that's just in one section of the sky. There's more sky that we're gonna learn about, and we fully expect millions of asteroids to be discovered that had never been cataloged before. You realize in the next few years, the Vera Rubin Observatory will discover more asteroids than have been cataloged in the last two centuries. A telescope would take multiple images of the sky every single night, stringing them together and basically making a movie, a movie of the night sky. Now we don't think you need that naively, because you look up at the night sky, the star is there tonight, and it's gonna be there tomorrow night, and the night after that, and the night after that. But how do you discover things that change? Well, we could do it passively and say, oh, that star just got really bright. I wonder when that happened. Did it happen an hour ago, overnight? Yesterday, I wasn't looking yesterday. These are how supernovae were discovered. Stars that blow the guts up into the surrounding environment. That phenomena takes hours. But if you're not looking at it while that happened, you missed it. You just see the end result. And you saw what it was before any of that happened. And you missed everything in between. So we know that stars vary in brightness. 
We call them variable stars. They'll vary over days, typically. The fast ones are 12 hours, 24 hours. Others will vary over weeks, some months. That's a time scale you can come back to the telescope, take an image, oh, it got a little brighter. Oh, it got a little dimmer. We, we had, we took, we felt comfortable with that. But wait a minute, suppose a star varied within just hours and then went back to what it was. How, how would you know? You would miss it. So what the Vera Rubin telescope will do is time sample, that's the term, the official term, time sample the phenomenon, not on a sequence of days, but hours and even minutes. So that if something varies on those shorter timescales, it'll get captured.